So I did something I've never done before. I sent our tractor off to Clatt Brothers Tractor up in Siler City to have some repair work done to it. If you've watched our channel over the years, I've always spent a lot of time fixing this tractor myself. And I did do quite a few repairs to it myself this year before I sent it off. Um, but the reality is, is sometimes when you've got a lot of things going on, you have to value your time versus going in and fixing something. Many of you have to fix it because you don't have any other choice. Uh, normally that's what I would do, but in this situation and all the things we have going on this year, I just went ahead and, and invested in the tractor a little bit. Um, I got this tractor, tractor super cheap at an auction, so putting a little money into it, it wasn't that big of a deal. The issue that I was having that I, d I couldn't really fix on my own was um, the brakes on either side of the tractor weren't working and I don't know if any of you have a tractor without brakes and hills. We have lots of hills here. But uh, this tractor just simply was not, uh, you couldn't stop it. You couldn't stop it with a baler on there. It was, it was kind of a mess, it was a little scary. So I did try and fix the brakes myself. When I took it apart to replace the brake pads, uh, what I found was that the interior and exterior axle seals were leaking. Um, you also had some bad uh, ball bearings in there. And so the whole thing was really kind of a mess on the, on the inside. And then I, you know, I had a leaking PTO seal. It's still dripping a little bit, but it, you know, they've, they've slowed it down quite a bit. And so it just needed a lot of help. And if you've ever taken the wheels off of these things and tried to work on that, you have to have special tools for some of those seals, some of those bearings. It's just not something that uh, was was feasible for me to take the time to do this year. We'll put it that way. But when they came back, man, Clap Brothers really cleaned this thing up. They didn't pay me anything for this. I paid them a lot of money. Um, but they really cleaned this tractor up. I had never washed this tractor before. I didn't even know what color it was. But... It is looking very nice right now. So thank you, Clap Brothers, for washing the tractor. It was almost worth it just to get the wash. Uh, the other thing that I had an issue with on this tractor, and I'm just gonna point this out to you guys who might have this problem and, and not realize what it is, but my front tires kept going flat. I put new rubber on them. I put new inner tubes in them. Every single year, I'm putting in new inner tubes in those tires and it shouldn't happen that way we do have a lot of hawthorns on our property but what was happening was that the the rims were rusted on the inside and because they were rusted um, they were just chewing up and pinching the inner tubes that i was putting into the tire and so what i had them do when it was in the shop was take those rims down to a tire place they they kind of had to piece this out the, the rims went to a tire place the axle went to an old uh, tractor restoration company and then they put it all back together for me but they they basically cleaned out those rims sandblasted them so that as I drive now you know I'm not going to be pinching on the inner tubes of that anyway I am going to add something to this tractor this year and uh, that's what this video is really about because this is exciting to me when you get a tractor that's an old tractor it, it's missing a lot of the modern amenities of a newer tractor and this is something that will make your life a lot easier and it's, and it's not very expensive to do. On the three-point hitch on the back of the tractor, you have a top link that comes out. And depending on what implement you're using or how you're using that implement, you would adjust that top link by twisting and turning it. And um, that top link could also become useful in other ways. When we try and pick up bales of hay with this tractor, uh, when I put the hay spear in, it's always straight going in. And then as soon as I try and lift the bale, it's always sagging. And because this is a Cat 1 tractor, it doesn't necessarily lift things super high. So if you have a sagging bale off the back of the tractor and you're trying to move it off a field, it's a headache. I have to drive backwards half the time to get the thing out of the field. And so I've been looking at different solutions to make this top link a little more functional for my needs, maybe even be able to have the ability to adjust or lift with the top link and, and change the angle of whatever implement I have on the back of the tractor. Now, I had installed on our tractor uh, remote hydraulics on the rear for our uh, hay baler. I have a video, I'll post a link up there, on how to install your re rear remote hydraulics. But once you install those on an older tractor, you're opening yourself up to a whole new world of power. This right here is a top link, it's called the Grizzly, and basically uh, the, the Grizzly will use hydraulics 
to adjust the length of your top link. So you can go from 20 to 28 inches, similar to any other top link, but then you could also pull it in. So if you have an implement on here, you could change the angle up, you could put pressure on it to push it down further. Um, I think that this is going to be a very, very useful uh, tool for our tractor. And I believe I got the right size. It's a category one, it's a category one tractor. So pretty simple. So the Grizzly I got from Agri Supply, which is it's kind of one of my favorite uh, supply stores. They have an internet website you can order from anywhere in the country, but they're also based here in North Carolina, which is why I like them. I can go to their warehouse and get lost in there for hours looking for random parts. And that's actually how I found out about the Grizzly Top Link. I was walking through the warehouse, I saw it, um, I was having a problem moving hay bales, and I thought, man, if I just had a way when I had that hay bale spear to just kind of tilt that top link a little bit, pull it in a little bit so I can get that spear pointing up, I could move my hay bales a lot easier. And so that's why I ended up getting this. Now to do this entire thing, you're gonna have to buy several different parts. Obviously you have the Grizzly top link, but then you're, you're gonna need your hydraulic hoses to connect to the back. When you get your hydraulic hoses, you're, you want to create a setup similar to this. You could actually go shorter on the hose. I went with a 24 inch hose and I could have gone with like an 18 or 12. The extra length isn't going to bother me, but I wouldn't go over this length um, if you've got your hydraulic set up the way I do. But when you get the hose, um, basically this is all that comes with it is uh, the hose, which is um, this actually has a high tensile steel wire braid on the inside, so it's a pretty solid hose. The, the, um, the Grizzly Top Link will handle up to 3,000 pounds per square inch. This will actually, this hose will handle 35 pounds per square inch. But I may use these hoses for different things, so, you know, why not get a, a 3,500 PSI? And then you're going to have to get an adapter to attach it to the Grizzly. And um, that's pretty much what this is. It's a half inch to I think three quarter inch adapter. I think this is, I think that's what I have here. But I will post some links to what I'm using here below so that you can easily find these adapters. They come with a nice little O-ring on them so that once you screw it into the Grizzly, it'll be in there for good. And I, I've been keeping a cap on this. Now I'm gonna show you how we put this together so they don't leak. On the other end here, you're gonna have to get a quick connect um, a male piece for your female on the back of the tractor and uh, that'll just screw on as well. Again, I'm going to use some plumber's tape to really put these on there so that they don't leak. You, these have to be able to hold um, hydraulic fluid under pressure. If you just screw them on like this, they're not going to work. So um, these are the pieces. They come individually. This is a, a half inch male o-ring. Yeah, I'm just going to post links to these below. <laughs> um, and then obviously your hose. So first thing I'm gonna do is put these hoses together and uh, attach them to the Grizzly and then we'll hook it up and test it out. Okay, so for assembling your hoses, all you need is a couple adjustable wrenches and I'm using plumber's tape. I don't know if plumber's tape is the best application for hydraulic hoses, but that's what I had in the workshop, and if I'm wrong, then I'll just have an embarrassing moment on YouTube. We'll wrap this up. Now to, to attach your hydraulic hoses to the Grizzly, you're gonna need a pretty good sized Allen wrench on the Grizzly. Oh. Okay. It's like it's painted on there, it's pretty tight.
feels like it's primed with hydraulic fluid already. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this before I screw it in. That should all work just fine. Slide that in with my pin. It's on there. This does have on one end on each side, these hoses do have a swivel. I, the, on the this outer one here, the swivel is attached to the Grizzly. On the top one, it is not as attached to part that goes into the hydraulic system. I'm not sure if those swivels make that much of a difference, but um, you might want to look at that depending on your preference. I'm just going to slide these in and again I'm not sure which hydraulic hose should go into which connection, but with hydraulics I'm not sure it's going to matter once I get used to the way that I'm installing it. My control will be the same. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys why I am putting this system on our tractor. Uh, the first thing is when, when you're dealing with brush hogs, brush hogs are very heavy pieces of equipment. Uh, Any time that you have to sharpen the blades or get up underneath them, I've, I've always had a challenge with that because you know you can only lift it up so high on the tractor and then get so far underneath it while you're working on it. Um, with something like this, you could you know lift it, elevate it off the ground like you normally would, and then completely lift up the back side a little more to make it easier to access the underside of the brush hog. So you have a lot more accessibility to doing repairs with something like this. The other thing is, let's say I need to back into an area and I, and I want the brush hog tilted up a little bit to kind of cut down some brush as I'm backing into it. You could tilt this up and the brush hog could be at an angle going back into the brush. And so there's a couple of great uses for this just on a brush hog alone but let me show you you know how this works on a on a something like a hay spear or even a boom pole So spearing hay has always been one of my nemesis, especially on hilly, uneven terrain like we have out here. You're getting the spear in at the right angle and then getting it off the ground high enough that it won't drag and won't fall off the spear. Um, right now, I just what I did was I backed in. I was able to adjust the spear at an angle I wanted going into the bale. And then once I got it onto the bale and started lifting it up, you know, where it wanted to sag back, I just, again, adjusted the grizzly and it popped it right up. So this is going to be a lot easier for me to carry around a field. It's not gonna come flying off my spear as easily. You know, I don't know if, you know, dragging something up a steep hill is still gonna be an issue, but I definitely have more control with this than I did uh, before. So that, this is one of the main reasons why I bought this actually, was for spearing our hay bales. We're about to go into uh, haying season and I've gotta move a bunch of bales off the field after they've been baled and there's nothing more frustrating than trying to drag bales that are just falling off your hay spear left and right so this feels like it's hooked on there pretty solid of course i don't really have to move this anywhere because the cows are right there so i'm just going to drop it so this is kind of a fun use for it uh the boom pole is 
very useful piece of equipment around your farm because you can lift some pretty heavy things with it. It's like having a mini crane. But before you have something like the Grizzly on there, your motion of your range that you can lift things in is, is relatively limited. As you can see with this, I was able to bring it up several feet higher. So uh, there are so many different ways that I could use this uh, when I'm trying to move something heavy from just trying to get something slightly off the ground to get the chains under it a little more, to lift the whole thing. Or if I really needed to get something up high, I could have lifted up high like this. Now I would be careful about how heavy you go on the back of a tractor because you can pull the front end of your tractor up off the ground if something's too heavy back there. Anyways, as you can see with this Grizzly, you could do a lot of things with implements that you couldn't do before. It gives you a wider range of motion on all your implements. It gives you adjustments on the go. So even with a sickle bar mower, if you just need to adjust your angle a little bit, you'll be able to do that with something like that Grizzly. I think you can apply this to just about any implement you put on a three-point hitch system and find a, a way of doing things just a little easier because of that Grizzly thing. For me, I think that that's the best 200 bucks I've ever spent on that tractor. It's just, it makes my life so much easier. So I thought I'd share that with you guys when I found that and I've installed it and, I, and I've learned how to work with it. I, I love that thing.